the first half of the 1900s, Trentham tarts were popular on local tea tables and in the windows of local bakers. They've all but disappeared, unlike their near cousin, the legendary Bakewell tart, or their more distant cousin, the Manchester tart. So where did Trentham tarts come from? And why did they disappear? And is it time for a resurgence in this lost local culinary legend? Perhaps Gladys Cornwell can answer these questions. Her father, William, was credited as the originator of the Trenton Tart way back in the early 1900s. There is a story that was passed down at grandmother's knees that the origins of the tart began with a servant from Trenton Hall. It goes something like this. After watching her family succumb to cholera at Spratslade over in Dresden, young Ada began the long walk to Penkel Workhouse. However, arriving tired and bedraggled in Trentham, Ada was taken pity on by Charlotte Swift, the licensee of the Trentham Inn, and she allowed her to stay there, earning her keep by doing odd jobs. Sometime later, a butler from Trentham Hall, while visiting the inn, made inquiries about employing the young girl as a scullery maid. So, when working in the kitchen at Trentham Hall, so the story continues, Ada was to add jam to the tarts for dessert, but absent-mindedly added sponge mixture too. She was reprimanded by the cook, but it was too late to start again, so the tarts were baked and served. Ada packed her belongings, expecting to get her notice, but the tart had a good reception, and she kept her job. The cook swore her to secrecy with the threat of instant dismissal if she told anyone the recipe, but I believe that Ada spent the autumn years of her life telling everyone how she invented the Trenton tart. I don't know if that story has any truth in it, but what I do know is that when my father, William Cornwell, had the idea for a new confection, he chose to name it the Trentham Tart, and it became one of the most popular lines in our baker's shop for decades. My father was born in Ulster, Warwickshire, in 1871, and served his apprenticeship there as a baker. He came to Stoke in 1898 and opened his own business at 52 Church Street. In the same year, he married my mother, a local girl, Florence Peake, and they had one daughter, me, in 1900. My mother died soon after I was born, so I never knew her. I was christened Florence Gladys, but my father always called me Gladys. At that time, we lived above the shop in Church Street and had a housekeeper and general servant, and my Aunt Elsie looked after me, although she was little more than a girl herself. Stoke was bustling at that time. There were potteries all around the town and we could see the huge Minton works from our windows. Besides the shop in Church Street, Father also opened Cornwell's Café in Campbell Place. By 1910, I was at school and Anne Skitt was our housekeeper. Father was always on the lookout for developing new confections and 1910 was a memorable time both in Stoke and Trentham. The six towns of the Potteries were federated on the 31st of March 1910 and Stoke became the headquarters for the town council with its new town hall, just around the corner from our shop. At the same time, Trenton was in the throes of losing its landmark, Trenton Hall. The Sutherland family had left a few years earlier and although the building had been offered to the council, the offer was turned down and it ended up being demolished. However, in April 1910, the gates to Trentham Gardens were finally opened to the paying public and would become a popular destination for Pottery's families. But Father was ahead of these changes and had already thought up recipes for Federation cakes and Trentham tarts, as can be seen from an article in the Sentinel in 1910. That window display was quite a sight. I just wish I had a photo of it. I still smile at the description of the Trentum Tart as a toothsome morsel, 
It certainly proved popular and we continued to receive orders from all over the country for many years. In the 1920s we moved to Lyndhurst at 136 Princess Road, Hearts Hill, and Anne Skitt's daughter, Georgina, kept house for my father and later for me for many years. Father died in February 1930. He was only 58. It was a bitter blow for me, but I did not hesitate to carry on the business, and I expanded the lines on offer and was licensed to sell wines. In February 1936, I decided to move into a new modern shop almost across the road in South Wolf Street. I was still happy to include the famous Trentham Tarts in our advertisements, particularly before Christmas. Later in the 1930s, other shops and bakeries like Lewis's and Embry's were making and selling Trentham Tarts, although we had never divulged our original recipe. Then the war came, and flour and sugar and eggs were in short supply. In August 1940, I remember I was fined two pounds and fifteen shillings with five shillings costs for insufficient blackout precautions at the South Wolf Street premises. Ah, those were difficult times for the bakery trade. To tell the truth, business was never quite the same again, although we carried on well into the 1950s. The golden age of the Trentham Tart had waned by then, but today I'm very happy to share the original recipe and demonstrate the baking of this toothsome morsel with you. I hope it will continue to be baked in local kitchens long after I've gone. That will be a fine legacy for Cornwell's Bakery. So, let's make a Trentham Tart. What do we need? For an 8 inch sandwich tin to serve 6 people, the ingredients will be 4 ounces of short crust pastry. Now here's some that I made earlier and I have already lined our sandwich tin. 2 ounces of butter or margarine. 2 tablespoons of caster sugar, 4 tablespoons of self-raising flour, 1 egg, a dash of vanilla essence, half a tablespoon of cold milk, 3 tablespoons of strawberry or raspberry jam, 6 ounces of icing sugar, sieved for water icing, one tablespoon of water. You can also add a dash of lemon juice for flavour. Spread the jam evenly onto the pastry. Cream the butter, sugar and vanilla essence. Beat in the egg. Add the milk. Fold in the flour. Spread the mixture onto the jam covered base. Bake in a hot oven regular mark 7, which is 420 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees centigrade for about 30 minutes. A 
and now allow it to cool. Make a fairly thick water icing to coat the sponge. Decorate with seven glacé cherries and seven walnut halves. And to finish, a single cherry in the middle between two more walnut halves. The reason for this arrangement has been lost in the mists of time, but in Trenton it's been handed down from one generation to the next. And there we have it, a genuine Trenton tart. Would you like a slice? So was it Ada or William Cornwell who first invented the Trenton tart? Maybe William heard Ada's story and thought it would make a good new line for his bakery business. He perfected the recipe and launched it at a time that Trenton was much in the news. It certainly brought him and his daughter some local fame and fortune. When Gladys died in 1969, she left £10,340, a not inconsiderable sum in those days. Trentham tarts still occasionally find their way onto Trentham tea tables. Maybe this is a good time to reintroduce it to a new generation of bakers. <laughs>